Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is what you've all been waiting for. This is going to be my review of Samurai Warriors 4 Empires. I'll go ahead and get this out of the way. Uh, my video on Samurai Warriors 4 2 was very negative, and I think it was everything I said was pretty fair. Is, and uh, that game still trash. Deleted it. No longer on my PlayStation. Never gonna play it again. Regret buying it. Really do. This game, 50 bucks US. I don't regret buying one bit. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and give this away. I think this is probably the best Empires game out of the entire series. Haven't played Samurai Warriors 3 Empires, though. Anyways, uh, basically how I'm going to do this is I'm going to show off the different features of the game. Then I'm going to talk about the features of the game. At the end, we'll do an overall type deal. Okay, so let's get into it here. This game uh, is very different from other Empire entries um, in that... Uh, Usually the traditional way that they've done it is, is that they've given uh, scenarios and then you just pick factions or forces or whatever within the scenario. And of course, depending on how history savvy you were, um, you know, you could uh, pick a clan. Basically what they've done here is... Hey, how about that? I'm, I think that means I've unlocked all the scenarios now. Yeah, you, you can see the ones I've cleared here as well as the uh, ones I haven't. Let's just... Uh, uh, Battle of Kawa Nakajima is an unlockable one. The ones that you start with, and I hope I don't get this wrong, I'm pretty sure it's uh, Battle of Okazama, uh Incident at uh, Honoji, and then uh, Battle of Sekigahara, and then you get this one... Uh, that one and that one as unlockables. Might be wrong on that, but I think that uh, I'm pretty sure that's how it works, actually. And I'm just going to show you here. We'll click on this one. Oh, yeah. Something else I need to talk about is these female characters. I'll talk about that here more in a second. Basically, look at the right side of your screen right now. You'll see, um, it starts you on the Takeda clan here. All of those that are recommended, you see a lot of them are giving off like white, like little auras there, sort of sparkly a little bit. I think I see some stars. These are recommended, you know, like as opposed to the Ota clan here. It's, it's not a recommended one. Doesn't mean I can't play as them if I want to. They're just not recommended ones. Obviously, the Battle of Kawa Nakajima, uh, Uesugi and Takeda are recommended as well as some of the bigger clans like the Saito and the uh, Imagawa. Uh, I think that there isn't a single scenario where that I hope I'm wrong about this by the way where the Mori and Shimazu are not recommended. Uh, obviously both of these clans have absolutely nothing to do with that uh, battle but you know this is how scenarios have worked before. And I could start as the Takeda, and there are special battles in this game, just like every single other Empires game. If I were to select the Takeda, for example, you know, within the first month or two, um, the special battle, Battle of Kawa Nakajima, would start. Uh, and I could win or lose, depending on my uh, ability. Anyway, next up we have something new they added called ambitions now generally in order to win a scenario you would have to start as a clan and then go on to uh, unite the entirety of the country be it China and Dynasty Warriors obviously or Japan in, in Samurai Warriors case the ambition takes uh, um, overlaps that basically what is the talk it is here their uh, ambition is to reach the capital. So, in order to beat this scenario as the Takeda, I would have to fight my way to the capital here, which is the square represented by the Ashikaga clan. And after I take that, 
I technically have won the scenario. What they will do in this case is, is it will say, you have beaten the scenario. Would you like to continue on to unite the entirety of Japan? In Samurai Warriors 2 Empires, they had something like this, but it was sort of different. What they did was they had regions. Like, uh, for example, uh, like this northern area up here, you could play as the Date, and you could fight several battles to unite the region. It was like a mini-campaign. And then after you won the mini campaign, it would ask, would you like to go on to unite the entirety of Japan? And you could click yes or no. Uh, of course, depending on uh, whatever it was that you wanted to do. And, uh, and uh, that's the case. I really like the ambient system, to be honest with you. I think it's really... I wish I knew a more romantic way to say it, but I think it's really cool. I think it's really cool. It, uh, they don't really have the mini campaigns. Uh, as far as I can tell, you are forced to play on the big map every single time. And, you know, other shit will happen across the land as, as you uh, work towards your own goal. And that's about the gist of it, really. That's about the gist of it. Now, uh, I want to show something else off while we're on the screen. The female officers thing I was talking about. They've added, you know, they haven't added any new, new characters, you know, like a, like a Shingen or a Kenshin or, or something like that. Uh, they have special custom characters, you know, replacing NPC models like uh, Dosan and uh, the Mino 3 and... Saito there, and well, both of them, and that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool as well. It makes a lot more of the NPCs feel more unique. I'm just gonna go uh, point them out as I see them. Uh, obviously, the first two on this one, uh, second one, uh, Akai. First two on this one are Agami and uh, Ukida. And that's really neat. But as you can see, like Nitsu there, they've added a bunch of just female characters. And they're historically significant. I can show you here in Fault, I believe it is, Biographies. Uh, they've added a bunch of characters. And they have all of their bios. Uh, uh, like, he here it is. A bunch of these legal wives. Uh, see, yeah. You can see they have added a bunch of these. bunch of these. Uh, and of course, many of them don't have the lady beforehand, as, as, as you've already seen. Like here, the mother of Nobunaga, which is just cool. Uh, anyway. Anyway, that's... I personally... To be honest, I don't like playing with all the female characters because they're, in essence, what they are is custom characters. Which, there's nothing wrong with that, but as we will also talk, let's talk about it now. The, uh, there's very limited, um, uh, voices here. Let's see, let's count them. One, two, three, four... Five. There are five different voices, and they say the same things over and over and over. Uh, you can adjust the pitch, and they've done that with these characters. Don't get me wrong, but it, it just it gets on my nerves somewhat. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about the custom characters because the custom characters in this game are probably the best that they've ever been. As you can see, uh, the, don't mind the leadership, wisdom, and politics. And all that stuff right now. Uh, I'm also going to talk about that. But basically, if you've played Samurai Warriors 4, Samurai Warriors 4 2, you've noticed that the characters are really bright. They are extremely bright. So bright that they hurt your damn eyes. Mine, anyway. In this game, they've gotten rid of that. The, the, I don't know what they did, but boy, just, gosh, good goddamn. That, it, it is bad. It's bad. Custom, as well as very limited options as far as customization. Uh, I, and I'm not going to go ahead and say that what they've done is... Let's see. There's a button where you can 
do the entirety of the armor set at once. Let's see if I can figure it out here. Um, that's not it. Was I mistaken? Perhaps I was. I'm not going to go ahead and sit here and you can count these yourself and say that they're the most you know, plentiful amount of customizations in the world as far as armor sets and stuff like that go. There's quite a bit, and I'm... I think that they already have DLC released. Uh, for more. Which, due to how the PS4 works, unfortunately, I'm not going to show you all the DLC that they have right now. It's mainly just like costumes for the like main characters of the series like uh, Yuki Murasana, like the Divine Law armor isn't it? Uh, is that actually it? I thought there was a lot more than that. Um, but all the... Well, I say all the... The new character from Samurai Warriors 4 2 makes his way into this game as well. You can play as Naomasa. Uh, and you know, just like all the other games, you can select weapons from any of the main characters, as well as they have the uh, custom uh, weapons that they introduced in Samurai Warriors 4 2 for the uh, whatever it was that mode where you went went around the land, and, uh, collected the biographies. Um, as well as just the three basic weapons of sword, spear, and naginata. Um, I should note right now, I talked about how they replaced a lot of the generic officers with custom officers that they have created beforehand and introduced in the game. I played my first, very, my very first campaign that I played when I first got the game was uh, the Battle of Okazama as the Oda. And I took as long as I possibly could to unlock all the different policies and stuff like that, which I actually have a complaint about that, but like I said, we'll, like many things, we'll get to it. As many officers, uh, there were several that you start out with. Most of the senior Oda retainers, like Takagawa, Niwa, um, those characters, they actually were given uh, custom sets. Uh, uh, Ujisato, uh, let's see, uh, Nobutada. They, it seems like they've given a lot of the custom officers this right here, the great sword with the with the rifle and shit on the back. Uh, they've given a lot of the custom officers this weapon right here. Most of the females have the twin swords. From what I can gather, from what I have seen, uh, and I don't like that really. I don't like that really. They should have used more of the already existing sets here. Perhaps they did that to make the actual officers feel more unique. Don't think it would have hurt. Uh, to, to be totally honest, I don't. I, I don't believe it would have. Do not believe it would have. Uh, let's see. Where is the face? The face it, it has about all the same options from Samurai Warriors 4 and Samurai Warriors 4 2 there's not really uh, many differences that I can tell right now is that supposed to be a man still I actually didn't even know you could... could. Wow, this dude looks pretty beast. The customization options are about the same, like I said. But for some reason, this sits a lot easier on my eyes, as well as gameplay. In Samurai Warriors 4 2, uh, the video I did about it, I showed off a little bit of the castle mode with the character I had made. Uh, wearing it was wearing the samurai armor as seen earlier it's the same armor I don't know, red it was just really bright and it wasn't wasn't rendered well I suppose and oh it just hurts the eyes this right here this man is a beast look at this man they've died I don't know what they've toned down but it's better now 
This man needs to go back to Great Cliffs and get his damn money back, by the way. Anyway. Anyway. Let's focus on the name and relations part here. Now, compatible with... This is mainly uh, in regards to, like, in-game events. You know, uh, it may even start you out, like... There's a, an option to randomly place new officers across the map. And I think it actually uh, might place your the officer closer to the officer it is compatible with. I do not know that for a fact. But, but I've been led to believe that is true because I've started several campaigns. Um, I, I selected... Uh, uh, yeah, Date. Ooh, sorry. I actually I made a character for testing all this stuff out, customization op options, stuff like that. And I played with custom uh, a custom character the first couple campaigns I did, and um, I put his compatible with Date, and each time he would spawn in the upper right corner, somewhat. If I chose to spawn him random. Uh, which was... Indeed, like I said, it was just twice. And you can select the parent of the officer as well. Which is really, really cool. That is something that as far as I know, they haven't put in any other Empire game. Uh, yeah, in, in Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires, maybe even 7 Empires, you can have children. Uh... And if you beat the campaign, you can then save the children. But I don't know if the relations are saved or not. I don't know. Somebody will have to let me know on that. But as far as I know, this is the first time in any Empire's game where you can set up the parent beforehand. Uh, and you can select actual officers as well as all of the custom officers here as well. So, it's cool. Uh, as far as number of officers in the game... Uh, there is a lot, which is wonderful. Let's see. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not going to go any farther, but you get the idea. You get the idea. Okay. Now, for the sake of the uh, showing off the wisdom and all that, I'm just going to start a new game. Uh... Yeah, let's do this. There's always a cutscene at the beginning. They're always look at that busted up ass fence with that smoke in the background. I don't get it. I don't get it, but I like it. But I like it. Now, this is a main feature of game right here. This is your castle. Uh, you start out with selecting your strategies. Now, it's important. I, I've always selected just like the most OP overall character. In this case, it, it would be uh, Mitsuhide Akechi. So, we will select him as a strategist. And magistrates. Now, military... I'm just going to go ahead and assign the magistrates, and then I'll explain a little bit more. What? Analyze. Okay, yeah. And magistrates will do better if they like each other as well. So you can see here, Morinari does not get along with Hironari, and the feeling is mutual. However... We select uh, Yoshitatsu. We'll put somebody else over here. Did I just... Sorry, let's see. This is one problem that I don't... Uh, particularly care for here. Alright, fine. You're just going to have to dislike each other, boys. I'm sorry. Uh, they didn't like each other either. Whatever. All right. Uh, 
course, resources at the beginning is pretty low. Your strategist will ask you to select a target for attack. Let's just say the Zai clan here. And now this this is the big crux of the game. Directives, you can only select one per turn. Now we can go up here, we can select our guy, and we can manually do one thing. Now you don't start with all of these, but these a lot of these have been ones that I've unlocked as I have completed the game several times on my own. You see up in the top right we have our gold and we have our food, uh, as which is the only two resources really that you have to manage in the game. Now we have a choice here. We can look at our proposals um, and each section will propose something along the lines of uh, uh, th the area that they're stationed. Like this for example is development I'm pretty sure. Let's see what did she say? Yeah this is development. Um, a magistrate down here will always suggest something that will help develop your country or you know your your area as it is. In this case uh, she wants to have us inspect which will increase our fame and raise the rice yield of our one uh, area. Next up is military and he'll he wants us to acquire the fish formation and the basic tactic formation flu fluidity fluidity I'm sorry I'm pretty good at English sometimes sometimes I'm not and this is personnel which um, is all about strengthening up our officers as well as uh, managing our officers like uh, yes yeah, reward supplies it'll cost us some supplies we can raise the loyalty of one of our officers and instruct wisdom uh, wisdom affects how good they do at their job like uh, wisdom affects um, I don't know I, I, I feel like this sort of goes without saying but obviously the higher their stats are the better they do you know, uh, and you need to keep that in mind as you're assigning magistrates. You know, you don't want to assign somebody with poor leadership, sort of like I've done, to the military section because they'll they'll suggest poor tactics and uh, stuff like that, as well as. There isn't one on the first castle, but there's, on most castles, there's a dis diplomacy um, area. And that's what politics sort of falls into. Politics also might affect personnel. I know that wisdom affects development. So, uh, anyway, we can choose from any of these directives. Uh, of course, all of, well, any of these directives, any of these proposals... Uh, the trade-off is is that you have to do both things that are in the proposal, or to use a single. Ah, I'm, I, I'm trying to think the best way to describe this here. I apologize. You have one directive, which means that you can either do at the start of the game as you un, as you get expand your area you will get more directives and you can do more things in the politics phase they call this I can either cultivate large but that'll be my one action I can only directly do one thing or I can accept one of these proposals and I can do two of these things uh, now you don't have to, like I said if you accept a proposal you have to do both you can ask your strategist say seek advice and as you can see, he's done a mix there. He's taken one of the things that was proposed by our development magistrate, and then he's taken one of the things that was proposed by our military magistrate. And this is what he recommends out of all the proposals. He believes that these two are the best. We'll go ahead and we'll implement that. And the we can... Uh, 
unlock more things as our fame increases and as our strategy increases and we can uh, do more personally and our magistrates will recommend better stuff no I wanted to show something off here uh, you can move officers uh, four guardians is just a event later on uh, don't worry about that see your alliances and all that you know that but that's basic stuff uh, why does he have so I don't know uh, okay let's go ahead now you can unlock banners by recruiting characters these will affect uh, you can put these on your castle and it will affect you in certain ways um, I don't like this at all because I no matter what clan I play as I want their uh, I want their banner to be on the castle you know if I play as Nobunaga I want I want the Oda banner on there if I play as uh, you know the Uesugi. I want the Uesugi banner on there. Anyway. If you aren't as picky about it as I am, you can change these and they will affect your income somewhat. Uh, you know. Uh, it's always in percentages, you know, as opposed to a hard number, which is actually probably for the best. I think I have unlocked most of them and these aren't just for the main characters in the game as well uh, yeah we're into here the Mogami uh, Ashina as you defeat clans you will unlock a lot of these so there's banners for every single clan in the game basically Uh, and some of them you get through certain events. Like, there's some of these, like a uh, male custom character. I'm pretty sure you just get that for creating a custom character. Uh, Eastern and Western Army you get by playing Battle of Sekigahara, I think. There's a lot of different ones here. And then at the bottom here, if you have Samurai Warriors 4 save data, you get the Gold Sonata. And if you play Samurai Warriors 4 2 and, and you have the save data on your PlayStation, you can get the E Army gold. <sighs> so there's that. The wallpaper, actually, this is purely cosmetic. You can change, uh, obviously, the backdrop there. I dislike most of the patterns that they have. That's pretty. Matter of fact, we'll go with Night Blossom 2 after we show them all off here. Uh, I'd, I'd, to be honest, I'd, I'd wish that they would get rid of the banner system altogether, but I mean, that, it is what it is. Okay. And I guess we'll show off a battle here. And that should probably be it. Now, uh, when you reach this screen, if your strategist feels that you have enough materials and enough soldiers and all that they will say now is the time to attack uh, our boy Misuhide Akechi actually didn't happen to recommend us here but we're going to attack anyway I hope we have enough uh, resources that might have been the way he said it alright we do we do and uh, this is where provisions come in handy you can use less and less provisions but it'll affect the time limit uh, gone are the days where every single time you attack you have a 30 minute time limit and every single defense battle is 15. Uh, of course there are stratagems and, and stuff like that that affect this as well, but uh, I can choose to take the lowest amount of resources here but we we'll only have 6 minutes. I know that that's not enough time for me to win this battle. We take 8,000 roughly. And we get nine minutes, we could take most of it and have 12. We actually don't have enough resources to do 15. But we don't need 15. 
So uh, right, let's go with nine minutes here. And I'll show off something else. You can see uh, the main character. You always play starting out as the leader, the daimyo. Every single character that the daimyo has close relations with or happens to be family of, they will get that little symbol right there, which is, uh, which means that you can play as them in the battle, which I'll show that off. Pretty sure there's a little cutscene here for the first battle. That's self-explanatory, a selective formation here. As you can see, fish increase attack of all allied forces. And then there are battlefield tactics. We don't have any tactics, but we don't really need them. Uh, there are tutorials and stuff like that in the game that will explain those pretty well. Anywho, let's go ahead and get into it. Now go ahead and show off. As you can see here, I actually cannot switch to the rest of the characters because... Uh, I am related to Yoshitatsu Saito. I can switch to his character. And he happens to be ready to rock at this point. But, we, but we'll play as this guy. And the controls are in the bottom left here. You can... I'm going to just say all charge. The left side says something along the lines of all, all defend, where all of your officers will return to allied bases and protect them against uh, enemies. Uh, and then if you press up, which is what I did a second ago, you can look through all of your officers and you can individually command them to do something like, uh, let's see, uh, we can set his target to that base that he's already at. Which adds a strategical element to the game. Uh, most times I feel that I don't need it. Matter of Unless you were doing like harder difficulties where you wanted officers to defend one way while you win another or something along those lines. I, I don't really see that being very useful. It's nice. It's nice to have the uh, to have the option, naturally. We'll have to say though, the uh, biggest problem about this game here is you can see, basically uh, this game is a tap triangle simulator because hyper attacks absolutely dominate this game because bases are almost always defend solely by regular soldiers um, unless at like the start of the battle you know where the forces first meet a lot of times you'll run across an enemy officer or two. You defeat them, and bam, the tab triangle over and over and over and over, and you capture the base. Hyper attacks make the game a little too easy. I, I said the same thing in Samurai Warriors 4. They're really fun, and it really makes you feel like you're just a fucking beast and nothing can stop you. But, uh, it is, uh, is lopsided. Speaking of lopsided, uh, me and my forces have absolutely just rolled over the enemy here, thanks in no small part to the uh, fish formation. What? The wall here. I don't think that there used to be a wall here. Oh well. Of course, uh, as all other Empire games, your goal is to connect your bases to the enemy main base, which will uh, spawn the enemy commander. Uh, 
then you can either, uh, well, most times you do both at once. You will either defeat the enemy commander or take the enemy main camp, which is represented there by the little tent. I don't know, the, the main, the enemy commander has the little samurai helmet there, so it's hard to, hard to see it, but it is there. biggest complaint I'd have to say is how policies work. Um, if you like to stick to a theme, uh, magistrates will over time get, dissat get dissatisfied with their position or feel overworked and they'll start doing poor, uh, poorly. Uh, well, actually, they just cut off the supply line here, so now he gets a little bit of a buff because we're in enemy territory. Still going to uh, dunk on his bitch ass here, but uh, policies. Some uh, there are some that are officer specific, and you have to have uh, certain officers in your employee and in the magistrate positions, and they also have to be recommended to you for them to do. Uh, that man just smacked his ass. What's wrong with you, son? Uh, for example, uh, you'd have to have Hanzo Hattori stationed in a specific magistrate position so that uh, he can he can actually assassinate officers. You know, because he's a killer ninja. Uh, Okay. And, uh, you know, the, these officers aren't the brightest here. I probably should have put Mitsuhide Akechi in, into one of these down here. Maybe he could recommend, yeah. Biggest way you get supplies is by levying, which will in decrease your fame a little bit. Uh, but obviously, you know, you get 5,000. 5,000 supplies, and I don't know. I guess that's really it. There's nothing much more to say. This is a very fun game. This is a very fun game. It's one of the better Empire games that I've ever, ever played. I think it's probably the best. Uh, policy system is wacky. The battles are still as fun as ever. They're pretty much the same, as a matter of fact. Uh, formations and battlefield tactics work the same way that they always have. Uh... They've added custom characters here, as you can see, and they, as you get more and more officers, you can expand the castle. They are actually, uh, see, can, can I build these right now? Yeah, it appears, uh, I usually go along the same set path, but, uh, that's neat. After you build the castle once, you can always... You can always build it. This is something that I actually haven't noticed. Mainly because I neglect to do this, despite the fact it's a good idea. Uh, and you can see, yeah, a strategy room, a dojo. I, I actually, you know, I haven't unlocked the dojo, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know what that does. I don't know what the shop does either. But, uh, see, castles needed three. They say castles, it just means areas under your control. Uh, which are represented by castles in this game as opposed to the, the name of the province as uh, they've traditionally done in Samurai Warriors. Uh, as you can see, uh, some people understand this. Let me see if I can find a fucking map here. Okay, yeah. Uh, say headquarters. This would be Omi, but, they, but it's represented by Odani Castle or Mino, which is represented by Mount Inaba Castle. 
or Inaba. I don't. I can't remember exactly. I've heard that said pronounced once. Okazaki Castle, Sunpu Manor, uh, Tsutsuji Gasaki Manor. Uh, I can't remember the name of that one. Mount uh, Kasuga uh, Castle. But uh, basically, that's how it works. That's how it works, and that doesn't really make much of a difference. I should have done done this to begin with. There you go. It's a good. It's good. Uh, yeah, so it, it shows characters that I uh, that uh, Dosan has good relations with. Uh, basically, this is what the four guardians thing was earlier. It's just in game events. If you have four retainers, you can do the four guardians thing. Uh, spouse will show up. Sworn ally. Let's see. Uh, I'd like to show off the spouse thing. And if you have a spouse and stuff like that, you, and then you go into the battle together, then uh, you each get a bonus. I, I remember, like I said, I played as Oda, and him and No would uh, get a little attack boost so long as they ran into each other on the battlefield. Very fun game. I can recommend this one wholeheartedly. This is worth your $50 if these type of games suit you generally get it play it thank me later my name has been logan i want to thank you for watching and i'm i want to go ahead and say i'm sorry that this actually took as long as it did to come out i've had the game for quite some time i've played it quite a bit as well but uh i was enjoying my spring break a little bit a little bit and uh that's how it is. That's how it was. But it's done. And I'll see you on the next one. Probably uh, as far as... I'll, I'll also tack this on here at the end. I doubt that there will be a Let's Play of this game. Uh, on my channel anyway. You can probably find somebody else who, who'd do a much better job anyway. Uh, probably wouldn't be as funny or handsome as me. But as far as, you know, production and all that. I'd probably do a little bit better. I may or may not play. Oh yeah, point out as I have expanded here, you can see I have two directives now, so I can do. I, I will do two of these just for the sake of doing two of these. Okay, we followed what he had to say, and now we'll show off this. There you go. Two actions that time. Basically, that's how it works. Uh, and there are certain milestones. The first one you get after you successfully take another territory, I believe the next one is when you have five. Then after that, ten. And then twenty, I think. And then thirty. So I think 